Randonautica is an amazing concept. It stores a list of random locations near you and will periodically send you there. It's a way of breaking out of your daily routine, allowing you to check out new and interesting places. In the beginning, I didn't even care to try it, but I made sure to share my enthusiasm for the concept on the dark web forums I frequented. Since my hearing had been severely compromised after a car accident I had a year back, I was nervous about going outside too much, hence why I spent so much time online and hesitated with using the app. It's just weird to walk around, not being able to hear what's happening around you. As fate would have it, there were dozens of people who shared my newfound interest. Most of them were less hindered by laziness, actually going through with testing it out. They'd often share pictures and stories from the weird journeys they were set upon. Through the forums, I actually made quite a few good friends. We even went as far as starting a Discord group, keeping in touch even outside of the dark web. Things were great and casual enough to be enjoyed without delving too deep into strange mysteries. That was until someone posted a new version of Randonautica on the forum. Hey, did you see Ryan posted a Randonautica mod on the forums? Kyle asked on the Discord chat. It was odd. Ryan had been our most active member, but he'd gone silent a couple of weeks prior. Suddenly he'd resurfaced with his very own creation. We tried to contact him to ask him about the program, but no matter where or how often we tried, Ryan remained silent. We speculated for a while, worried his account had been hijacked and that the program was a Trojan horse. But in the end, the only thing left to do was to actually use the app. Maybe then we could figure out what had happened to Ryan. So we all downloaded the app and clicked through the instructions until it gave us the coordinates. We shared them in Discord and to our absolute surprise, they were all the same. It meant that the app was either broken or it was something planned by Ryan. Whatever the case, we decided to check it out. The coordinates appeared to lead us out into the middle of a desert in Arizona. For me, it was just two hours away by car and a subsequent trek on foot. Three of us decided to meet up and go looking. All of us were in the vicinity of each other, relatively speaking. All right, so we meet at the end of the road and walk the last bit together, James asked. Yeah, just bring water and some supplies. It's hot as hell out there, Kyle chimed in. We kept a Discord voice chat going as we drove there. I was using my hearing aids that doubled as headphones. All right, I'm here guys, James said. I found Ryan's car as well, but we still have some way to go before we reach the coordinates. I'm almost there as well. What about you, Kyle? I'm about to get there, two minutes, Kyle said. Wait, what's that sound? James asked. It's coming from the desert. James fell silent for a while, refusing to respond to our messages. Uh, I'm here, but James is gone. I see his car, but Kyle did not finish his sentence. No sooner had Kyle uttered those words before he too fell silent. By the time I arrived at the rendezvous point, they were both gone. The cars were still there, but the people themselves were just missing. Hello? I said. No response. I was getting worried and wanted to leave, but I couldn't just let them vanish like that. The more cynical part of me suspected them all to be in on some prank, but I couldn't shake that eerie feeling that filled the air. They'd both left their supplies, just leaving their cars behind with nothing but their phones. I started walking through the desert, sweat pouring down my back as I pushed my unfit body towards the goal. Guys, please respond, I called out, but nothing happened. My trek had gotten to a hill, the last few hundred yards before finally reaching the end. They had to be there. James, Kyle, I called out, my own echo the only thing to respond. Then I heard someone groan from just up the hill. It sounded like James, and though my hearing aid barely picked it up, it sounded like he was in pain. My mind was racing, wondering what kind of horrors he'd ran into, but rational thoughts tried to convince me he had just fallen or twisted his leg. There, at the top of the hill, I finally found Kyle, standing with his clothes drenched in blood. Kyle, what the hell happened to you? I asked. That's when I saw the hundreds of bodies just lying atop of the mountain, all in various stages of decomposition and mutilation. James was one of them, lying down facing the ground, not moving nor breathing. In his hand, Kyle held a chunk of his own flesh. He dug his nails deep into his own arms, clawing at whatever tissue he could get out. I immediately rushed to stop him, but the damage was far beyond anything I could fix. What the hell are you doing? Stop it, he shouted. The sound, I want it to stop. Please make it stop. There's no sound, Kyle, what are you talking about? I tried to wrap my own clothes around his bleeding arm but the wounds were too deep. Even a tourniquet wouldn't help, as he'd also torn out bits of his legs and abdomen. I need to do this, 
just let me do this? He mumbled, his voice fading as blood was draining from his body. The blood loss was substantial, and I knew I wouldn't be able to bring him to safety before he succumbed to his own wounds. Before long, he just collapsed to the ground, his breathing shallow and the life fading from his eyes. He whispered a few final words, but they were too quiet for my damaged hearing to understand. I tried to call for help, but despite having a full set of bars, we had effectively been cut off from civilization. While we could call each other, something was preventing us from calling out from the area. I just left. Unable to carry their dead bodies back to the car, I promised myself I'd return with help, if only to retrieve the dead and to shut down whatever had killed them. They never could find that place again. The app just cleared itself once I'd left the area, deleting the coordinates both from our Discord server and itself. I survived because my hearing was damaged. But why my hearing aid didn't pick anything up, I'll never know. When all is said and done, this might just be a mystery I don't want answered. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy these stories, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and check out some more of my episodes here.